right. My name is Alina Gripsko, and I'm one of the co-organizers of the Yale Tech Conference today, and I'm also the program director at the Yale Entrepreneurial Institute. Up next, uh, we're going to be discussing the next 10 years of computer science at Yale. And here to talk about that is Joan Feigenbaum. She's the department head as well as the Grace Murray Hopper Professor of Computer Science. She received her BA in Mathematics from Harvard and her PhD in Computer Science from Stanford. And before coming to Yale, she was with AT&T, where she created a research group in algorithms and distributed data. Uh, at Yale, she has worked on some high profile and interesting projects with DARPA as well as the National Science Foundation. So here is Joan Feigenbaum. Thank you. Okay, so over the next 10 years, Yale has two choices. That's the university, not the CS department. Yale can do what it takes to become a world leader in computer science and continue to be a world leading university. Or Yale can fail to become a world leader in computer science and cease to be a world leading university. And that's an exclusive or. Okay? Now, uh, probably uh, those of you who have thought about this question before are saying, what does that have to do with the next 10 years? That's been true for the last 10 years. So, Yes, it's been true for the last 10 years, and during the past year, which was my first year as chair, there's actually been some changes that some of you might have read about. Now, this is a beautiful graphic that was created by one of our undergraduates named Marcus Rusi, and unfortunately, this beautiful graphic can't be read, so let me read it by you. So that's something I should have thought about, but let me read it to you. Computer science is not a bubble. Every industry and academic discipline on Earth continues to benefit from innovations in CS, creating a more connected, balanced, and informed world. I like that. Created, con connected, balanced, and informed. Okay. Our university's administration must expand the radically underfunded and understaffed computer science department if it wishes for Yale to retain its stature as a modern university. I didn't tell him to say that, okay? This is an undergraduate. He came up with more or less the same stark choice that I see for the next 10 years, okay? Now, undergraduates can't wait 10 years. So they started their own petition. And in general, there has been a lot of tumult over the past academic year. Before the undergrad, all this bottom-up bottom up agitation that actually resulted in some change. So before the undergraduates started their petition, the graduate students wrote an open letter to the administration published in the YDN about the fact that Yale the size of Yale's computer science department is a joke if Yale wants to be a world leading university. There have been public complaints from students and alums and parents about soaring enrollments and no growth in the faculty. Um, the, 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 this uh, beautiful poster that I showed you was put up on the walls all over the campus because um, there was an online petition started by another undergraduate called Alex Rankin. And lo and behold, all of this agitation actually produced action on the part of the administration. There were more than 1,000 signatures by students and alumni. I, I assume that some of you actually signed this petition, and I thank you. Um, there were $20 million in two anonymous donations to the School of Engineering, which we are now part of. And the administration announced with great fanfare and with much gratitude from the CS faculty and the students that it plans to expand the CS faculty from 20 ladder faculty to 26 ladder faculty. So a non-trivial expansion. And um, this is really the, um, very big news because it's been talked about at Yale and elsewhere that our faculty has not been growing while computer science has been growing by leaps and bounds in terms of popularity with students and importance in the world. So it's very notable that this change happened. Okay, reality check. 
Among the, wor the current world-leading universities, we have the smallest computer science department. The one with the second smallest computer science department is Harvard. So Harvard has recently announced plans to grow to 36. And Yale has not yet made a public commitment to growing beyond 26. I'm told by various people with absolutely no details <laughs> that there is talk of a second phase of growth and that there is some action on that front in the highest reaches of the administration, but I don't have any concrete information about that. So that's where we are. A first step has been announced. If it's the last step, we're not going to make it. So it has to be a first step towards a big and great computer science department befitting one of the world's greatest universities. Back to this exclusive or and stark choice. So the right choice, obviously, is that Yale must do whatever it takes to become a world leader in computer science so that it can continue to be a world leading university. And you, alumni in tech, are key players. We need your support, we need your ideas, and we need your money. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> so I'll be here all day. I would love to hear your ideas. And I just love to see some continued bottom-up pressure and activity from the Yale community, of whom the Yale Tech alumni are an extremely important faction. Thanks. Are there questions? Jonathan. Yes, well that's where Yale is at this moment. <laughs> Yale has six very big majors. One of them is uh, life sciences and it's basically pre-meds. It's not really an indication in my, as far as I know, of really deep undergraduate in interest in life sciences. But um, the, it, although, you know, it might be, but it's, it's, it's something that exists at every university. There's a very big biology contingent among undergraduates because there's a big pre-med contingent. The other big majors are economics, political science, psychology, English, and history. Now, I should tell you where we're at here is currently, and this was not historically true, English is the smallest of the big majors. Computer science is the biggest of the small majors. Now, there's a gap at the moment, but we've sort of entered the chasm. And if things continue on this trajectory, we will cross English before too long. And at that point, I don't think there's anyone who could say with a straight face that, you know, computer science just isn't or shouldn't be part of Yale's mainstream culture. Yes. Could you identify yourself? Oh, the joint CS50? Oh, okay. So um, we have had a very, um, Yale has had a long, a stream of complaints from undergraduates about uh, our curriculum, our curriculums being, I don't know how to put it, uh, not folk, real world focused enough. Okay, so we're changing that. We're going to have several courses next year that are sort of real world versions of our introductory programming course although we're going to continue our academically focused introductory programming course as well, and also a real world focused version of our um, introduction to computer science class. We're gonna have something called inf introduction to information systems, which is a real world focus. So when I became chair, um, 
Peter Salovey told me, you know, I want you to start a CS50. Okay, I want you to start a real-world intro programming class in the CS50 style. So I um, didn't, you know, I hadn't really paid much attention, frankly, to this controversy before I became chair because I wasn't someone who would teach that class and I wasn't the director of undergraduate studies and I just sort of didn't have a role to play. So I set out to try to find someone who might teach such a class. And one of the people I talked to was David Malin at Harvard. And we had a conversation, and then the next day he sent me an email message saying, ah, here's an idea. Why don't we have a joint CS50? And we'll have students at both campuses, you know, part, you know basically taking the same class in a distributed fashion with occasional face-to-face -face interaction and with online interaction and a few other ideas. And the end of his email message was culminating at the end of the semester with a joint hackathon that we can bill as the Harvard-Yale game of CS. And I thought, oh, well, that's an interesting idea. And to make a long story short, I showed that, I, that email to Tamar Gendler, who's the Faculty of Arts and Sciences Dean, to Peter Salovey, and to Jonathan Holloway, who's the Yale College Dean, and they all loved it. And they said, yes, let's do that. That would be great fun. So we're doing it. Now, as far as exporting the course, um, the idea is to have an experiment in a joint and interactive and physically distributed introductory course, and also to have an experiment in a mixed online, offline course. So we will give the students the opportunity to watch these, you know, famous, you know, um, Sanders Theater lectures of Malin. But the real learning at Yale and at Harvard, and frankly, in every introductory programming course, for those of you who have never taken one, doesn't take place in lectures. It takes place in sections and in office hours and when doing homework. So we're going to have a full complement of sections and office hours on campus, and that's the experiment. The experiment is how do you combine best of breed online resources in, in, in the form of lectures with best of breed, face-to-face, on-campus resources, namely your fellow Yale students and a Yale instructor. So we'll see, it's an experiment. If it doesn't work, we'll drop it, we'll experiment with something else. But what we've heard from the students is they want experiments and they want more real-world opportunities, which includes entrepreneurial opportunities. And I should say we have another new course that's just had its inaugural rendition this semester on tech and entrepreneurship. It's taught by the Hadapt founder, Dan Abadi, and by Kyle Jensen, who's sitting in the back of the room. I think my time is up. So I'll be around all day. I'd love to talk to all of you.